So this is the first section of chapter seven on statics from the uh, applied year two book. And as the name implies, the word static basically means not moving. So these are questions where the forces going up and going down, they're going to be balanced. The forces going left and right are going to be balanced. It may be that we have something on a slope like this, which means that the force is parallel to the slope and the force is perpendicular to the slope. They're all going to be balanced. And if we have moments as well, the uh, clockwise moments will equal the anti-clockwise moments. Everything is balanced. So we normally look for the word like equilibrium. It, it might say something like on the point of moving. So all types of things like that, that will help us decide um, that it's actually a statics question. The key word here is equilibrium which means that the forces uh, horizontally and vertically are going to be the same. So what that means is, is we need to work out what these forces are. So we can easily work them out. This will be 4 cos 45. Over here, this will be 4 sin 45. Over here, we'll have P cos 30. And this will be P sine 30. So we're going to resolve or look at the forces horizontally and vertically. So let's start by looking at the horizontal forces. They will be balanced. So we have to the pointing to the left, the 4 cos 45. And that will equal the P cos 30 going in the other direction so we can easily just solve that to find p p is going to be 4 cos 45 divided by cos 30 let's just work that out and see what we get so 4 cos 45 divided by cos 30 in degrees we get 4 root 6 over 3 which is well actually I'm going to write the exact value down because I'm probably going to need that in a minute so 4 root 6 over 3 um, and decimalize that's 3.26 3.27 3.26 dot 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 okay so we basically found p if I now want to find Q, let me resolve or look at the forces in a horizontal direction. And up we have 4 sine 45 and P sine 30. We've worked out P already. And that will equal what goes down, which is Q. So the first thing I'm going to do is to replace P with the exact value that I got for P. So that's going to be 4 root 6. I said 6 and I wrote 3. I don't know why. 4 root 6, 3 times by sine 30. That will equal Q. So I can probably work out an exact value for that. So 4 sine 45 plus, um, I could probably do answer actually, and that gives me 4.4614 dot dot dot. So I really want to finish this off and give my answers to three significant figures. So I remember the four, well let's write down key, I've got that here on the screen, 4.46 and the 4 
root 6.3 is actually 3.2727. Okay, and these are newtons. We've worked out the size of these forces. So we have that keyword again that it's in equilibrium. So that means the forces are balanced. Now, we could try and resolve horizontally and vertically that way, but there are some forces we wouldn't be able to work out um, what their components are, or, or it'd be very difficult. We might be introducing another unknown. So actually, it's easier in this case to resolve parallel and perpendicular to the slope like that. And often when questions are on slopes, that's what we do. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, what that means then, uh, breaking this force up into its components, uh, this bit here will be P cos alpha. This bit here will be P sine alpha. Uh, the only other force which we need to split into its components is going to be this, the five newtons. Now this is going to be 30 degrees. It's always going to be the same as the incline of the slope. So this one here is going to be 5 cos 30. And this bit here is going to be 5 sine 30. So let's start by looking at the forces which are parallel to the slope. So the forces which are going that way, they're going to be balanced. So we have 8 that's going down and 5 sine 30 that's going down the slope and going up the slope we have p cos alpha so that's one equation it's got two unknowns so we're going to have a need another equation and we'll get that by resolving the forces perpendicular to the slope and we have two going up going up perpendicular to the slope and we have the p sine alpha going up the slope uh, or going perpendicular upwards and then going down we have the 5 cos 30 5 cos 30 so we're going to have to solve these simultaneously now what we can do is we can take this second equation here and if we write it as p sine alpha equals 5 cos 30 minus 2 then what we can do is we can do this this equation divided by this equation to get tan alpha i'll show you what i mean so if we now write um well p sine alpha divided by p cos alpha is tan alpha yeah and we can use that to find alpha now what is p sine alpha well it's this 5 cos 30 minus 2 and what is p cos alpha well it's that 8 plus 5 sine 30 now that equals tan alpha so what does tan alpha equal let's do this on our calculator the exact third value is minus 4 plus 5 root 3 over 21. So if we do the tan inverse of that to find alpha, so shift tan inverse answer and I get 12.5121 degrees. So let's call that 12.5 degrees, three significant figures. So that's alpha. And now if I want to find P, all I need to do is to now substitute that into any equation. I'm going to substitute it into, uh, well, let's rearrange the, the first equation. Let's rearrange this. Doesn't matter which one I do uh, to make uh, P the subject. So that would be um, eight plus five, sine 30 divided by cos alpha is p now we have what um, cos alpha is now when i work this out i'm going to use the answer button 
because I've just worked out that angle. So rather than type in a rounded answer, so I'm going to do 8 plus 5 sine 30, and that's going to be divided by cos answer. And that gives me P as 10.755, so 10.8, and P is a full set so Newton. So here's my answers here. There's P, and there's alpha. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 7a on pages 130 to 132 of the textbook.